Why is bit error rate plotted on a log scale? Let's look at the most basic example of binary phase shift keying with an additive white Gaussian noise channel. In this case, the received signal can be written like this, where at time k, the signal is the input data signal of plus and minus ones multiplied by the square root of the energy per bit plus Gaussian noise. So the Gaussian noise is a, has a distribution with a zero mean and a variance of sigma squared. So let's think about this and let's uh, look at our drawing that we can make to try to understand the probability of making an error because that's what we're interested in for bit error rate plots. So here we're drawing the situation for the output measurement y on this axis and it's going to come from either an energy of a positive energy of the square root of eb or a negative energy of the square root of eb depending on whether the input data was a plus one or a minus one. If on this axis we're going to plot the probability of getting that value y given that x equals minus one. Let's just look at that one for an example. So let's say x was sent here, the energy would be here, but then you're going to be receiving it with Gaussian noise. So this probability density function will be a Gaussian centered at negative EB and having a shape, the typical Gaussian shape that looks like this. Okay, so now let's think about how the errors happen. Well, if you have received a signal and this is the, it's a random value because it's random noise, then you're going to make an error if your signal comes as a positive value. Okay, so your signal Y. So what's the probability that it comes as a positive value? It's the area under this curve. And now we can think about this in relationship to whether it's a linear function or a nonlinear function. And quite clearly we can see it's going to be a nonlinear function. Think of as we make this energy bigger and smaller, think of what that's going to do to this area. So if we made the energies smaller, then the curve would be shifted to the right. If we make the energies bigger, it shifts to the left. And the area here is affected in this nonlinear way due to the shape of this Gaussian curve. So when they're close together, uh, we'll be seeing if we, for small changes, we won't see much change in the area. When they're in this region here, if they're closer, but we're going down through this steeper part of the slope, you'll see more change and then you'll see a tailing off. And if we plot this, we'll see that the plot has this kind of a shape. It's not exactly the Gaussian because it's the area under a Gaussian, but it has a similar shape. And we're going to plot this up here. And that's what you can see if you plot with a linear scale. And here we have the equation that's being plotted here. We can show the bit error rate is this Q function in terms of the energy per bit to the noise energy ratio. And uh, e, uh, N naught uh, relates to the sigma squared here because I'll just write that here, sigma squared equals N naught W. And uh, for more on this, you can check out the links in the description below the video where we have videos about noise power. Okay, so if you plot it as a linear function, then you get a shape here, as we might expect, it looks a bit like a Gaussian. So why aren't we satisfied with this linear plot? Well, let's think about what we're seeing here. It's only showing us across the range of bit error rates of things which are in the order of one error in 10 or two errors in 10 or three errors in 10, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0.3 and so on. But we're not only interested in those, we're actually interested in one in 100, getting one in 1,000, uh, one in a million. Uh, for example, one in 1,000 would be something that's suitable for voice signals, one in a million for data. And from this plot here, we're not getting to see the bit error rate on this plot uh, for those types of values. So now let's think, well, uh, this is a function with an exponential in it, so it might seem natural to plot it on a log scale because of the exponential here. And here's what you get if you do plot it on a log scale. And clearly now you can see that it's showing us all of these different possibilities of all these different orders, one in 10, one in 100, one in 1,000, one in a million, and so on. And so this is really the reason 
that we want to look at the plot on a log scale. Another reason is that in the high SNR region, the slope of this is, can be shown to be linear when you plot it on a log scale. And so evaluating that slope shows you the advantage that you get from putting a extra power, signal power into your signal. It shows you the extra gain you're going to get in terms of bit error rate because it's a linear function in that uh, in a log scale. So hopefully this has helped you to understand a bit more about plotting bit error rates. If it has, uh, like the video, give it a thumbs up, helps others to find the video. Check out the description below where that you'll find a web page with a categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.